Pope Francis got into trouble last month when he compared European migrant and refugee camps to World War II concentration camps. As it is not my habit to defend popes or wade into Holocaust disputes, I won't. But I will say I had, in this one respect, a pope-like response to a movie I saw recently. The Zookeeper's Wife, directed by New Zealander Nikki Caro, depicts the real-life couple Antonina and Jan Zabinski, who used their zoo to conceal an elaborate scheme that rescued hundreds of Jews from the Warsaw Ghetto and eventual extermination in Nazi death camps. Directed by a woman adapted from a book by Diane Ackerman, The Zookeeper's Wife has gotten grief in some circles for sentimentality and for overemphasizing animal war victims at the expense of human ones. Personally, I appreciated the story of resistance. What I wanted to talk about, though, was the recognizability of that Warsaw Ghetto. As soon as the audience sees people in World War II clothing rounded up and herded into walled-off buildings to live in subhuman conditions, we all know what's going on. Even without special effects or gazillion-dollar budgets, we know the Warsaw Ghetto reflects a genocidal plan to exterminate a people. So how do refugee camps read? and not just refugee camps. I was in the desperately poor suburb of a wealthy world city not long ago, where dark-skinned residents lived in tin roof shacks packed behind a dividing fence at the side of a major highway. Without running water or reliable electricity or effective garbage collection or real doors or windows, for lack of tolerable toilets, men and women and children broke through the fence to defecate in full view of high-class commuters driving to the airport. I've seen similar scenes on just about every continent. So how do those scenes read? Decades of movies have taught us that the Warsaw Ghetto reflects genocidal intentions on the part of the ghettoizers. Perhaps that's why World War II metaphors are perhaps overused. We know what they mean. So what about the subhuman conditions we systematically herd whole populations into through war, segregation, expulsion, redlining, detention, incarceration? What do today's ghettos and camps and slums reflect intention-wise while some stack up unimaginable riches? Quote, one of the greatest dangers we face, Pope Francis wrote long before he became Pope, is a feeling of complacency, of becoming desensitized to the world around us. Last I heard, he was defending his comparison, and I stand with him. Write to me, tell me what you think. That's Laura, L-A-U-R-A, at lauraflanders.com. And find all our archives at our website. That's lauraflanders.com. I hope you'll subscribe and contribute. Become a member. Join us. And thanks.